Hi guys, so in this video we're going to take a look in more detail at continuous random variables. Now I've called it a continuous random variables intro and I say more detail because you have looked at continuous random variables before. You looked at them when we studied the normal distribution. This is assuming you've done normal distribution before this lesson, but I normally teach it that way because the normal distribution is part of the standard level course, yet they don't have to do, um, well, this bit that's that's coming. Um, anyway, the normal distribution, this was a normal distribution. And let's say we were talking about height. Well, we said, imagine a, the mean height was 150. We said the way we the, the way to find the probability that someone's height was more than, I don't know, 180 or whatever it happens to be is you go to 180 and you get the area, the area under the curve gives us the probability and the reason for that is because the y-axis here is not a pro it's not the probability it's the probability density so this is the probability density that's the p probability density hang on i need to write that again it will drive me mad so this is the probability density that's what the y-axis is and the what that means is it it is designed in such a way that the area gives us the probability so if I want the probability that someone is between 150 and 180 centimeters I find this area if I want to find the probability that they're less than 150 well that's that's 50 percent this area would be 0 0.5 now the way we calculate those areas is luckily in normal distribution you just use your calculator it's actually a really 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 complicated function because that the normal distribute the normal distribution function the probability density function or pdf for short is a really really horrible function and luckily we don't have to integrate it but the way we'd normally find areas is by integrating and that's why we have the probability that x x being your continuous random variable is between a and b is the integral of f of x that's your function so imagine this, this curve is your f of x this is your y equals f of x it's the integral of f of x from a to b now if you studied integration which if you haven't stopped this lesson immediately go back and study that first but once you've studied integration this makes sense because that's what area is it's the integral between a, the integral of the curve. So this is, let's say this curve is y equals f of x. It's the integral of this curve from a to b that gives me this area. And that is the probability. Now what's this second curve here? Why have I drawn this? Well, normal distribution, fine. But not all distributions are normal. And what we're going to look at are, is um, probability density functions that are not normal at all. We're going to be looking at uh, functions that you're familiar with, and we're going to be using integration to find these probabilities. So that's what that first formula here is. It's, the, it's that the probability is the integral. And the reason for that is because the probability is the integral. Um, or sorry, the probability is the area, and the area is the integral. And this here, this is also this. Your y-axis here is probability, probability density. It is not. It is not the probability, and that's why you may have heard me say in the past: never use, uh, never try to find normal PDF, because all you're going to be getting is this probability density value that doesn't make a whole lot of well, doesn't have a whole lot of meaning if you're trying to find a probability it's the area that has the meaning that's the that is the probability that you're looking for it's also the reason that you might hear you might have heard me say for a continuous variable the probability of any the probability of any value the probability that x I should maybe write this in red as well for a continuous random variable the probability that x equals zero 
sorry, the probability that x equals anything, so any any value, I'm gonna write the probability that x equals any value equals zero. You cannot the probability that someone is 180 centimeters tall is zero. It cannot happen. Because remember, someone's either a tiny little bit more than 180 or a tiny little bit less. No one is exactly 180. And that's why we're only interested in a range of values. We're, we're interested in greater than 180, or between 150 and 180, or less than 100, or whatever it is, or between A and B. Hence, we have the integral. The second one that I had written down here at the start is that the integral of f of x, the area under the curve from negative infinity to infinity equals 1. And again, if you remember your normal distribution, that makes sense because the, the, prob the probability, the total probability is 1. Now you're rarely going to see negative infinity to infinity because, uh, I mean, mo most real life examples won't go on to negative infinity to infinity, but just be aware of this um, well, a normal distribution technically, uh, in in theory, can go on to negative infinity and positive infinity, even though obviously height can't be negative. Okay, so that that's kind of my introduction. I'll do one example to kind of explain what the whole thing is. But to kind of one last summary of what I just said there, the area under the curve gives you the probability. And to find the area under the curve, we integrate. That's it. Okay, example one. Let's do it. I think I'm only doing one example, so example. A continuous random variable has a probability density function, PDF, of this. f of x equals this. So it's kx squared for x is between 0 and 3. And it's 0 otherwise. Now, get familiar with piecewise functions you met you I mean I've seen exam questions with like five pieces in the function so five different things at at in five different domains all the same function so um, get used to this now this is luckily there's only one that actually seems to matter because it's zero otherwise so really the whole thing is happening between zero and three now if you can draw this you might as well draw it see what's actually happening. So here we have our, this is our probability density, let's just call it y for now, and this is our x value, whatever this random variable is. This is a quadratic, it's a, it's a k, it's a k quadratic, so look, because this probability I'm going to, that, that k has to be positive. So what's actually going to happen is, it's something like this, right? Now I don't know just remove that. I don't know exactly what's what's happening here yet, but let's say there's one, two, three. So let's say this is this here is three. And this function, let me just change that color. So the the blue curve this is my y equals f of x. This is my probability density function. So if I find the area underneath this, I get I can get any probability that I want. The first question though says find the value of k. Now I'm not sure what the value of k is, but we can figure it out. Because um it's between zero and three. So this is zero and this is three it's zero otherwise which means there's no other there's no other function it has to be the the variable has to be between zero and three there's nothing over here and there's nothing over here which tells me that the to this total area well here's a question for you what does this total area have to be well the answer is one because the total area it, it has to be between zero and three so the probability that it's between zero and three is one because it's guaranteed it has to be that so I can say that the integral of 
kx squared, which is my f of x, between 0 and 3, dx, the integral of this dx, has to equal 1. Now, let's just do this. So it's this is kx cubed, kx cubed over 3, between 3 and 0, equals 1. I am going to sub in my 3. So this is going to be k times 3 cubed over 3, minus 0, because when I have to sub in the 0, it just becomes 0, equals 1. Uh, divide here, whatever, that's 27k over 3, which is, what's well, 27 divided by 3 is 9, so 9k equals 1, k equals 1 over 9. So that's part A done. K is, k is equal to 1 over 9. <coughs> Excuse me. So part B, now I have K. It says find the probability that X is between 1 and 2. So this is, goes back to that first rule that I was talking about. The probability that X is between 1 and 2 is the area, well, let's, let's shade it, is the area between 1 and 2. This is the area that I'm trying to find. This will give me the probability that this thing is between 1 and 2. So it's the integral. 1 and 2. I now know that's a ninth. So this is this is a ninth x squared dx. And this equals, that is going to be a ninth x a ninth x cubed over 3 from 2 to 1, which is actually equal to, um, that's x cubed over 27, so I'm going to go 2 cubed over 27, 2 cubed over 27, subbing in my 2, 2 cubed over 27, minus 1 cubed over 27, which is actually equal to, 8 over 27 minus 1 over 27, which is 7 over 27. So this is the this is the probability that x is between 1 and 2. Okay, that's a fairly straightforward example. I wanted it to be a fairly straightforward example because this is kind of my introduction to to continuous random variables. Um, this is how we find the probability, we find the area. Yes, this is, I put this question in there to find k because look, it, you often see that type of question. Um, but essentially, that is uh, your introduction to continuous random variables. In the next lesson, we're going to look at the uh, how to find the expected value, and how to find the variance. Obviously, if you if this is a paper two and you have your calculator you can go straight well look this one yeah you'll need to you won't be able to use your calculator from here um straight away but this one you would if he says fine if you get a, a probability den density function of a ninth x squared and it says find the probability that x is between one and two you lit well you write that down and you literally sub it into the calculator press enter and you get your answer okay see you guys in the next lesson